All right, we're going to start with 2.8. It's called wrapper classes, and then it says integer and double. So mainly talking about the integer and double classes. We've talked about primitive data types in Java, and you know we talk about integers and doubles and booleans, uh, but uh, it starts off and says here for every primitive type, including integer and double. There's also something called a built-in object type called a wrapper class. And the reason why this exists is that so that way you can call object methods on certain what you would normally be a primitive data type. Uh, you can actually call different, um, different methods that exist within these objects. Okay, so being able to use the power of creating an instance, creating an object, there are certain things you can do with that, that maybe you want to use with your previous, you would use a, prim, uh, you'd use, you'd use a primitive data type before, but maybe now we want to do something special with it. Um, this isn't frequently used, but something that is important to know. And if you're writing a more sophisticated program, you might need to know a little bit about wrapper classes. It says uh, the wrapper class for int is called integer with a capital I, no surprise. And for double, it's called double with a capital D. Okay. Sometimes you may need to create a wrapped object for a primitive type so that you can give it so, so that way you can give it to a method that is expecting an object. Okay, some methods expect you to pass it an object. Okay, in Java, we have to be very specific of what we're passing in to different arguments. So if it's expecting an object and not expecting a primitive data type, you might need to wrap that object. It says to wrap a value, call the constructor for the wrapper class, um, you're supposed to do that for earlier versions of Java, and that's what's on the AP exam. But it says in Java 9, this is deprecated, meaning that it's not the best way to do this anymore. And you should instead just set it equal to a value. All right. The AP exam covers Java 7 instead of Java 9. There are updates to the programming language frequently. And <clears throat> just... Um, uh, just in the past, you know, decade, they've updated the programming language. And uh, one of the things before I took over teaching this class, um, this class was being taught, I believe, in like Java 5, which was kind of, it was extremely outdated. The book was from, uh, one of the books they were using was from like the 80s which <laughs> I didn't believe was the best possible way of, of teaching this class. So um, nothing against that, but technology is always updated just in a few years. The things that I learned and the ways I learned to do things in college are no longer relevant. Obviously the principles have remained the same, but in order to be a, involved in, in technology, involved in computer science and engineering, you have to consistently be a lifelong learner and always learn new things and be open to learning new things. And with that being said, you're not going to take a class for every new thing you want to learn. Typically, the best way is by looking online, watching YouTube videos, by Googling it. Um, when I don't know the answer to something, I Google it and can probably find the answer to it pretty quickly. Okay, by knowing the principles and by knowing how to program in one language, that can then translate to other languages. Okay, so it says here, um, in older versions of Java and on the AP exam, you would write integer i and set it equal to um, assign it the value of a new integer, and then you would type two inside that integer, inside the uh, parentheses. All right, instead of saying like int i is equal to two, we would write it like this double d is a new double 3.5. You're creating an object with two in it. You're creating an object with 3.5 in it. In newer versions of Java, see how this looks very similar to how we would write strings, right? With a string, we can just write a capital S and then T-R-I-N-G and then the name of the string and then assign it a, a value inside quotation marks. It's pretty similar to that now. 
Fortunately, on the AP exam, we're still using Java 7. Although this isn't something that's entirely new because this is how you would typically create objects. Okay, these wrapper classes defined in the java.lang package are also useful because they have some special values like the minimum and maximum values for the type and methods that you can use. Just try the following code to see the minimum and maximum values for the possible type int. Okay, what are the minimum and maximum values? If I run it, it went ahead and printed out um, an integer minimum value. The lowest integer is negative two, one, four, seven, four, eight, three, six, four, eight. That's all that that can store. That's the lowest number that it can store. As well as the maximum value, two, one, four, seven, four, eight, three, six, four, seven. Also notice, okay, if you take the minimum value, right, integer minimum value minus one, what happens if you go beyond these limits with minus one or plus one? Notice that if you have the minimum value and you subtract one, notice how it starts back to the biggest possible number. Okay, it loops back around. The same if I'm trying to take the biggest possible number and I add one to it, it gives you the lowest possible number. All right, that's important to note. You know, you don't want to max out an integer. Okay, so we have the integer um, class we're referring to, right? Our object, and we're using dot min value and dot max value. Okay, it says the int type in Java can be used to represent any whole number from, and it gives us our range. Why are those the numbers? It says integers in Java are represented in twos, complement binary and each integer gets 32 bits. In 32 bits of space with one bit used to represent the sign, you can represent that many values. Okay, and why is there one more negative number than positive number? It's because zero is considered a positive number, okay? That's something that, you know, I, I, I do foresee being something that is on the AP exam, like an AP exam question right? True or false, zero is considered a positive number. Okay. <clears throat> why, do, why do the last two lines print out? Or what did the last two lines print out? Did this surprise you? As we mentioned, it looped back around. Java will actually turn the maximum integer if you try to subtract below the minimum value. This is called underflow. Okay. Went too low and it flowed back over to the highest possible value. And if you take, um, says the minimum inter integer value and you try to add one to the maximum, if you try to add one to the maximum, this is called overflow, okay? Um, it is similar to how odometers work. So in a really old car, when you reach the maximum possible miles, it just will start over, okay? The odometer rolls back to zero the minimum value. In Java, any int value that surpasses 32 bits gets rolled over, and you're basically starting from the beginning again. So underflow is when you go under the minimum. Overflow is when you go over the maximum. When would you use this? When would you ever use integer min value or integer max value? They are handy if you want to initialize a variable to the smallest possible value and then search a sequence of values for a larger value. Yes. Um, you would have to use a different type. Yeah. Um, it's a great question. We can. You have a long that you can use, 64 bits. Okay, so the question is, what happens if we go over our 32 bits? You can use a long, you can use 64, so a lot more. 
Um, the same thing in, in double. I know you mentioned float before. You can use float as a data type as well. Won't take up as much space as a double. Okay, great question. Okay, um, it says auto boxing is the automatic conversion that the Java compiler makes between primitive types and their corresponding object wrapper classes. Okay, the automatic conversion that the compiler will make between those primitive types and their corresponding object wrapper classes. Uh, this includes converting an int to an integer and a double to a double object. Okay. The Java compiler applies auto boxing when a primitive value is passed as a parameter to a method that expects an object of the corresponding wrapper class or assigned to a variable of the corresponding wrapper class. Here's an example of auto boxing. Okay. Unboxing. So we have auto boxing, we have unboxing. Unboxing is the automatic conversion that the Java compiler class, sorry, that the Java compiler makes from the wrapper class to the primitive type. This includes converting an integer to an int and a double to a double. We've talked about each already. The Java compiler applies unboxing when a wrapper, imagine something has been wrapped, right? And then you want to unbox it. Makes sense. Think of a, a present. You wrap the present and you can unbox it. Uh, when the wrapper class objects pass a parameter to a method that expects a value of the corresponding primitive type or assigned to a variable of the corresponding primitive type. Here's an example of unboxing, right? So we have our integer i and we've assigned it the value of two. And then we take that value, right? And we assign it to an int, a primitive data type. And we give it the number. So we have wrapped it, which is really your auto boxing. And then we unboxed it. We took it from that wrapped into a primitive type. Okay. Let's go through some vocab here. Okay. We have the automatic conversion from the wrapper object to the primitive type. Okay. From the wrapper to the primitive type. We have that. We also have the integer dot min value minus one. We have integer int integer dot max value plus one. And then the automatic conversion from the primitive type to the wrapper object. So we know if we have the maximum value and we add one to it, that was called overflow. Take the minimum value and we subtract one from it. That is underflow. Okay, moving up here, we know that int is a primitive type and integer uses our wrapper class. Okay. Once again, these are the last two we just went through a wrapper object to the primitive type. We're taking it and we're unwrapping it or unboxing it. And this is automatically converted. The word auto should do it for you, right? You're moving from the primitive type to the wrapper class. All right, so unboxing, auto boxing, wrapper class, primitive type, overflow, underflow. I'm correct. Okay, here are some more useful methods in the integer and double classes. Okay, run the code below to see useful method. Uh, see youth, useful methods in the integer and double wrapper classes. So I'm going to run it. And we have integer i is assigned the value of two inside our main method. We also have a double d is assigned the value of 3.5. Okay, this is using Java 9. Okay. And what we've done is we have, if we look back at our vocab, we have auto box or auto boxing, the automatic conversion from a primitive type to the wrapper class. So I'm taking this primitive type and I'm putting it into this class. So now it says system.out.println. I'm taking i and it says i.int value. That's a new 
method that we haven't talked about, it says it returns the primitive value. Interesting. And then D dot double value will return the primitive value as well. So the first two things we printed out, it printed out two and it printed out 3.5. Okay. It says string age str is assigned the value 16. Okay. It says here we have a new string uh, and it says integer dot parse int and double dot parse double are often used to convert an input string to a number so that you can do math on it. They're not on the AP exam, but they're useful. So they're going to show you. Okay. So we've printed out age dot 16 in 10 years is, and then we take the integer, right? Dot parse int the method that I just talked about, and we are then passing in it age str, okay, plus 10. So notice that it says age 16 in 10 years is 26. We've added 10 to it, okay, by using parse int. We are taking the integer value and then putting it there in system.out.println. The second print line, it says, note that plus with strings does concatenation, not addition. All right. So that's important to look at. And that's why 16 took this out. Uh, maybe I got to zoom out. Yeah. It has age str plus 10. If you're just taking this string and adding 10 onto it, it just taxed on the very end. But if you want to perform a calculation, in this case, we wanted to parse int using the parse int method. All right, passed. Programming challenge, can you fix all the bugs in the following code to use the correct integer and double methods and variables? All right, so I'm going to go through here. Normally, I'll make a few changes and then not see everything. We'll have to go back to and make some additional changes. All right, it says integer i is assigned the value 2.3. I capitalize i in integer. Uh, double d is assigned the value five. Okay, so really that would give you 5.0. They're gonna, okay. So if we look at integer, right? Maybe we want to change integer 2.3 to just two. Uh, maybe if we want to do five, we can say 5.0. Okay, system.out.println, and it says i.int value. Okay, notice that there are no open and close parentheses. Uh, I don't have anything out in front of double value, so I can say d.double value. Uh, print the min and max values for each. Um, notice that this right here needs to be typed integer, and then it needs to be in all caps as well. Min value, max value as well. And notice here, there are parentheses at the end. If you go back and look, when we looked at the min value and max value before, Notice how we did not have parentheses. Okay, we had integer dot min value, max value. Okay, so I will take out those parentheses. All right, I'm gonna run it. Let's see what happens. Okay, I receive a two. Our integer was two. Um, as we said before, if we would have just put a five here and ran it, it says there are compiling errors. Check it out. You told me you're going to pass me a double. So it's expecting a decimal point, even if you have to write 5.0. Okay. So 5.0, and then it provides the minimum value as well as the maximum value for integers. All right. And we pass it. All right, just a quick summary. We talked about wrapper classes. Like I said, I didn't want to spend too much time on this, um, but using the min value of the integer, right, allows you to see the min value and then the max value of the integer. 
Uh, we talked about auto boxing. We talked about unboxing some of the other vocabulary words. Uh, you know, we talked about what, obviously we've talked about primitive types before, but we mentioned overflow as well as underflow. If you move over the max value or under the minimum value. All right. And it says the following double methods and constructors, including what they do and when they're used are part of the Java quick reference guide given during the exam. It says I've completed five out of five activities on this page, completed. And that was 2.8 wrapper classes, integer and double. 